Okay, number three. So asking us a certain substance has a heat of vaporization, uh, 50.07 kilojoules per mole. At what Kelvin temperature will the vapor pressure be six times higher than it was at 345 Kelvin? So we are doing, um, so we have here the heat of vaporization. So we can say delta H vaporization equals 50.07 kilojoules per mole. And it says asking what Kelvin temperature will the vapor pressure be six times as much, right? Six times as much than it was at uh, uh, 345 Kelvin. So basically we have here, um, we have here T1 here, delta temperature one is 345 Kelvin, and we're looking for a T2, obviously. T2 here is our, our, our unknown here. And you can think of the um, vapor pressure six times, it would be the ratio of um, P1 and P2 would equal six, right? So we can think of this as P2 over P1 equals six, right? And basically when we says it equals six, it means because it's six times higher, right? So P2 is six times higher than P1, right? When the when it was first, um, uh, when it was initially, right? So we can say here, this ratio here equals six. Now looking at all this stuff, what kind of equation can we use to look at, to look at, um, to look at our, to relate basically our heat of vaporization with our temperature and our pressure here? We're, 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 uh, in the solution here, it says we're going to use um, this equation here, the clausius clapeyron equation here. And basically, this this reaction relates all of these guys together, right? It's going to say that um, uh, the pressure here is proportional to basically e to the power of the delta, the negative delta H or enthalpy of vaporization divided by RT, right? So we can also rewrite this as, and let me write this down for you, as ln. And basically, it's being. It's, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna just write down the equation for you here. So it's ln of basically p1 over p2. Uh, p1 over p2, I believe. Yeah. Or this is here. This, is, this says here p2 over p1. So let me just write write this out for you first. Uh, is a delta delta h of vaporization divided by r times one over t. 1 over T2 minus 1 over T1 here. So in this case, they actually flipped this. So they did P2 and then they did T1 minus T2. In this case, it doesn't really matter uh, which order we do it with. But I'm, I'm going to stick with this one because this equation is what I've known before. So if, if P2 over P1 here is 6, then P1 over P2 is obviously 1 over 6, right? So 1 over 6 here, I have my, and then I'm going to have my 50.7 kilojoules per mole as my uh, enthalpy of vaporization. Uh, R is simply just 8.314. We know that through our the ideal gas constant, right? R is 8.314. That's something you're already familiar with. Times 1 over T2, which is what we're looking for, right? We're solving for T2. And then 1 over T1 is 345 Kelvin here, right? So 345 Kelvin. And all we're going to have to do is we're just going to do some algebra here, right? To isolate for T2. So I'm going to find ln, ln of 1 over 6 first. So I'm going to take ln of 1 over 6, and then basically I'm going to divide it by uh, this guy here. So I'm going to take ln of 1, 6 first. I'm going to get uh, negative 1.79. Sorry, that's 6. 9, 1, 8 equals, what's well, 50.07 divided by 8.314 would give me a value of 6.02237 times 1 over t2 minus 1 over 345. I'm going to divide both sides by 6.02237, right, to get that to the other side. I'm going to get a value of negative 0 0.2975, which will equal 1 over t2 minus 1 over 345. And then I'm going to have to, I'm going to add 1 over 345 to both sides here, right? So I'm going to add 1 over 345 to both sides, and I'm going to get negative 0 0.2946 uh, 463 would equal 1 over t2 here. And then finally, let me just uh, let me just backtrack here. I think I'm going to get a negative answer, which is 
not good here though. So let me just uh, think about what I did here. Um, let's see if I have a negative answer here. I'm gonna get, oh yes, that's why. So I forgot to convert joules to this kilojoules to uh to to joules here so that's my fault here so this here has to be in joules because i remember my r constant is uh joules per moles times kelvin so i'm gonna have to actually convert kilojoules into joules for this so that's actually my fault i for missed a step here so 50.07 times a thousand would give me uh my uh, my kilojoules here so this is 50 sorry sorry about that folks this is 50 50,700, so this would be joules per mole now. And this will here, this will give us our good units here. So that's my fault for not using units here. So the 50,070 50, divided by 8.314, oh, sorry, divided by 8.314 would give me a value of, this is now 6,000, 6,022.372 here. And I'm gonna divide that number, 1.79, eight nine one eight divided by the answer here will give us a much smaller number so this is not right this here is not right here i'm going to get negative uh negative this is negative two point nine seven five two times 10 to the negative four. So let me just see. Yeah, T1 is here, right? T1, yeah, T2 minus T1, and I'm solving for T2 here. And they had one over T1 minus one over T2. I did one over T2 minus one over T1. So I think it should be okay now. Add one over 345 to both sides. I'm gonna get a positive value, that's good. Let's give me 2.60103 times 10 to the negative three. And then I'm going to simply do one over that. So T2 equals one over whatever this guy is, 2.0103 times 10 to the negative three. And this will give us our answer. So T2 is going to equal 384.2. Kelvin or you can say uh, approximately 385 Kelvin and this is very very close to this answer here so this I think it's probably a rounding issue here when I rounded one of these guys here but this here is the correct answer so solution here is correct uh, good analysis here okay